God bless my brothers and sisters. It's another beautiful night to worship the Lord and the beauty of his holiness. I'm excited for this teaching because it's time that people know the truth of God's word. And we live in a world today where many people, um, many people don't preach the truth and they don't stand on the truth. But one thing is for sure, that the word of God, right? It will never change and it remains forever. He said that his word would never come back until I'm void. See, the problem that we have today, especially with those people who portray to be Christians, they believe that God is not in, the thing, the, the whole, it, even have to talk even having to talk about this doesn't really make any sense right because if we're believers of God then we know that he has all power that demons have to bow that every knee must bow and that since the beginning of time his will always came to pass and nothing was ever able to stand in that way not even the devil and all his demons so when people think that people like the Apostle Paul, right? This brother have wrote so many epistles, so many epistles. This is how you know that people are being used by the devil. And some don't even know it because they say things like Paul had a demon in him, right? Or Paul thorn in his flesh was a demon. Or in Romans chapter seven, Paul was saying that he, he commits sin. Brothers and sisters, this is the problem that we have today, that people are looking into the Bible and misinterpreting what these people that are spiritual have said. Remember, the Bible comes from God. Second Timothy 3, 16 and 17, that all scripture is given by inspiration of God, right? It came from God, it's God's word. These people had God's spirit in them. So naturally they're gonna speak what God tells them and what God will speak through them, right? So these people believe that Apostle Paul, right, was doing this, can, can those who are watching, can y'all hear me? If y'all can hear me, because my phone, the last teaching I did was having some technical difficulties and I was hearing like a static in the background, but can y'all, if, if anyone's listening, can y'all hear me? If you can just, you know, a, a, a thumbs up, smiley face, whatever the case may be, just so I know that all is well. If not, I can go grab um, Courtney's phone and just go from there. I'm just coming back from the gym now, but I was excited cause I, um, you know, I. Uh, I wanted to have the grace to be able to teach. I, um, you know, wanted to get back and be able to share this teaching. But those who are watching, can y'all hear what I'm saying? I'll wait to someone um, respond to see if, um, you know, I'm able to be heard. Because this is an important, important teaching, very important teaching. And I don't wanna, I don't wanna go further if, you know, I'm not able to be heard. Let me see. Yeah, so, um, you know, but tell me if, if y'all able to hear me to see if I'm able to be heard. If you're able to hear me, you can either um, text me or, um, you know, send it. Okay, thank you. <laughs> like, I know someone's going to, 
You know, I know someone gonna tell me they can hear me. I'm waiting. I said, somebody gonna say they can hear me or something. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm like, I see everybody watching. Ain't no one going to say anything. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Okay. So now we got that understood. Y'all can hear me. That's good. All right. Let's move on. Because I'm like, I know someone going to say something. I'm like, I'm going to wait to see if somebody can hear me. I see the, the people up there. So I'm like, I, people got to be watching me. <laughs> How's this? Oh, it must be the water at the bottom. So, so this is an important message, okay? Because the world, I want y'all to always remember that the world is against God. Even, we, okay, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna try to figure out why it's doing that, um, Sarah. So, but as long as y'all can hear me though, we gonna, we gonna get through it. Because if I cut it off, then I'm gonna lose everybody and you know, we got to try to figure out how we're going to do the phone. So I figure out why it's doing that. I don't know why it's, it's doing that. Because people can hear me good when I'm talking, but it must just be Facebook. So we'll figure out what it is. As long as y'all can hear me, though, if it buffers, it buffers. It make a little static. You know, we'll get through. If we get to the point where you can't hear me, then we just got to terminate, you know, the live. But um, we have to realize that everyone is not a Christian, Okay. And that's not Brother Ronald just saying that. The Bible says that. The Bible said that there's going to be false prophets, false preachers, you know, uh, false prophets, false teachers. You know, um, it, Paul in them dealt with false brethren. He talked about false apostles, deceitful workers, you know, transforming themselves as apostle of Christ. You know, so we see even our brothers, you know, in the, the, the our brothers 2000 years ago. They dealt with those things that we see today. And people are always saying that some people are always making up something that's not biblical, right? But the Bible was right there. But see, the reality is, is that nobody ever wants to accept who they are. I was just talking to my mother on the phone, right? All right, thank you, brother Jeremy. I was on the phone with my mother, right? Just before, I, and I had to get off so I can come make this video. But she, we was talking. And I was saying, one thing I learned in ministry, man, you know, just being a minister and dealing with people, is that delusion and pride is people's biggest battles. Delusion and pride is the biggest battles that I have ever seen in people. And when you're a minister of God, you're like a doctor, you're like a psychiatrist. You know, you're constantly dealing with people, like people open up to you, you know, they trust you, you know, God sends them, you know. They know that you're a you're servant of God. You're going to give them spiritual counsel. You're going to direct them. You know, you, you're going to pray with them. Things are going to happen. You know, God's grace will intervene. They know that, right? So they know that you're sent from God. So, but the, if, if you ask me, if y'all were to ask me, you know, in all my years of ministering and preaching and teaching, praying for those who have demons, praying for those who are sick, what, what do I say is most people's biggest battle and, and the hardest thing they have to accept and deal with, I would say pride and delusion. And you say, Brother Ronald, why pride and delusion? Because one thing I learned, and not just when it comes to ministry, but even in the world, like for instance, a person might be overweight, right? And they don't like the workout, but they don't want to say they don't like the workout, right? They know in their heart that they don't want to work out. But they weren't about what you're going to say or they weren't about how people are going to look at them if they say, I don't like to work out. Right. Knowing that not working out means you're going to always stay big and you're going to be overweight. And you're going to be unhealthy. Right. So instead, they will try to build grounds on delusion by saying, you know, oh, I, you know, I, sometimes I just don't have enough time or, you know, it'd be late when I get off of work or. You know, um, sometimes, you know, like if I if I do certain things, I, you know, I might feel like a little bit like instead of them just coming out and telling the truth, like I don't like working out. So the change can happen because then we can start pushing you and motivating you. Hey, look, let's let's go to the gym. Let's get in there. You know, we'll take it slow. And, you know, they got to believe in They got to believe it in themselves first. You know, faith, faith is not forced. Neither is anything in the world. 
So, but instead, people will be like, uh, you know, it's just that um, I just got so much going on. But in deep down in their heart, they know I'm not motivated to go to the gym. That's delusion. I mean, that's pride. Delusion is them trying to create this false reality that true doesn't exist because the same energy that they need to go to work every day, they need to go buy groceries. If you spend an hour doing anything else that causes you to be on your feet and moving and different things like that, that same hour could be dedicated to the gym, right? Because a person can go out and cut their grass because the grass is getting too high. That don't mean a person love cutting their grass. They don't want them HOA people coming and, and saying something. They don't want to get them knocks on their doors. They don't want their neighbors complaining. A lot of folks don't like cleaning their houses, but they clean them because they worry about how people are going to look at them. They might have people that come over. They might somebody might pop up. So their motivation is, is, is to please people and not to, to, to do it for the glory of God, because then it'll be consistency. They'll be diligent and they'll do everything right. And they'll rejoice as they're doing those things. So see, now that I use those analogies, let's bring it to Christianity. Nobody wants to die and go to hell. You want to know why Christianity is the biggest right now in the world, but many are not true Christians? Because there's no person that's over you physically that you got to answer to. There's no punishment that comes from twisting the word of God, not obeying it. There's no punishment that comes physically. There's no immediate danger that comes if a person twists up a scripture or misquote the Bible. There's no punishment, right? And a lot of reasons why people even sign up to be Christians is for prideful reasons. Reputation, status, becoming somebody who you wasn't in the world, right? A lot of people become Christians because... The false Christians, because they can use this lifestyle to their advantages. It makes them feel good. Right. And then because their conscience agrees with some things that's in the Bible. Right. Remember, the Bible, our conscience comes from the word of God. So a lot of people might say, well, hey, you know, like, do y'all do y'all ever notice that most people that come to Christianity in generations, they never look like people like me? You don't see no pastors on the, right now in the world, for real, that got tattoos on their face. You don't see none of them Black Chinas or Nicki Minaj's, Cardi B's, truly claim to be Christian women. You don't never see them type of people that come to God in our generation today. But they were in the Bible days. Y'all ain't hearing me, though. Are y'all listening? Listen to what I just said. How many are the street guys? What do all these pastors look like? What does all these pastors look like? Oh, that's my mother. What does all these pastors look like? Clean cut? How they grew up? They weren't gang banging, shooting at nobody, jumping over bullets, prison, convicted felon. How many of these Caucasian pastors? How many of these African American pastors? How many of these God fearing women, as they claim to be, were in the streets? Were, 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 were getting money, was doing this and doing that. Most of them grew up in school, went to school, graduated, like, you don't really see people in our generation today that really come from the world. They come from the street streets. Most of these people that's preaching, if they are young, they grew up in ministry, religious ministry. Their daddy was a pastor. Their, their, their daddy's daddy was a pastor. Most of the women that you see today that claim to be Christians, if you check their background, who they were and how they were, they, were, they wasn't really part of the popular crowd. The guys either. They wasn't the people that was like, oh, you know, well known and they, they left a lot to come to God. Most of them was already somewhat living religiously before they even chose to become religious Christians. Y'all ain't hearing me, though. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? I only speak forth the truth. How many pastors do you know on TBN that look like Brother Ronald? How many people do you know that are, are genuine preachers that are known around the world, whether in this country or wherever, that look like they're from the streets or do they all not look the same? Clean cut, tailor made, suits, ties, you know, preach the same, talk the same, you know, the same thing. So are you sure that everyone is true Christians? Then where are the ones that's from the world? 
Because all these so-called Christians look like the Pharisees. Where was the where's the people that was the Gentiles? Because if you ask a lot of these Christians, how did you grow up? They're going to say they grew up in the church. Well, where are the ones who never knew about God? Where are the ones who were living that street and rough and rugged life? Where are the ones who never went to church day in their life or even seen the Bible? There ain't many out there, brothers and sisters. So are they really reaching the loss? Are they just, are they breeding generations that's being, that's growing up in religion and they're claiming to be Christians? Y'all ain't following me. Y'all ain't following me. Y'all must have worked hard today. Y'all ain't following me. Listen what I'm saying to you. How many of those women do you see that you see on Instagram with them that are, are in the world as the world portrays on YouTube with them big old bottoms and this and that going on, the long weave and this and that, the eyelashes? They ain't in none of them churches. They ain't in none of them churches. Go on Instagram. Y'all know y'all be on Instagram. Y'all be on Instagram now, right? Go on Instagram. All them video vixens, people that got a million subscribers and followers, the ones that's in the world, they ain't nowhere near no church. But everyone that's in these churches all look alike. Look at some of these people that are well-known Christian influencers on social media. I ain't got to say no names. I want you to go and look at their friends. They all claiming they all look alike. They all look the same. Where are the ones that's in the streets? Because Jesus went and got the loss. He brought everybody to him, not just those who were groomed to be Christians in the future or those who was raised to be pastors or, or preachers. Where are those video vixens? Where are those girls praying that's 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 paying for the, the, uh, the Brazilian butt lifts? What are the girls that's praying for their, their breasts to get done? What are them guys that that's that's selling crack and cocaine? What them what are, what are hood guys at? What are gangsters at? As the world say, what a woman that's walking around, that's rocking the red bottoms, you know, wearing the, the Louis Vuitton, the Gucci, them ones that's deep in that world. Because they ain't in none of these churches. Go on their Instagrams. They don't go to no church. Go to the God's Instagrams. They ain't going to, God is far from them people. But if you preaching the word and you truly sent by Jesus, then how come none of them folks are from the world that's in your churches. They ain't in none of these churches. When you go to a church on Sunday, they all look clean cut, tailor made. None of them guys got tats on their face, all over their head. You got a few of the Spanish guys in California do gospel rap. But gospel rap is not of God. Right? Now, you might see some Spanish guys, you know, and they gospel rappers. Or they street preachers. You still see that aggressive side. Right? But I'm asking you, on TVN, who do you see that look like a person who really came from the world? That's right, Jeremy. I want you to think about it. Thank you, Jeremy. Think about it, brother. That's what I want you to do. Don't just watch and not think. I want you to think about what God is having me to say. Because it's all God. This ain't Brother Ronald. What do I know? I only speak forth what he says. I want you to think about that. All these people that you see claim to be Christians today, none of them look like me. The men. Them, them religious words ain't reaching them guys that's like how I was in the streets. Because ain't no power involved. They deep in darkness. You understand? Who you think brought me out? No man brought me out. But Jesus himself. Who brought Paul out? Jesus himself. That's right. Ain't no man brought me. His words wouldn't have reached me. You ain't been through what I've been through, brother. You don't know what it feel like. You don't know that you ain't never been to prison. You ain't never been shot at. You ain't never been shot. You never probably even touched a gun. You're talking about God will help me, this and that. But see, the power of God is what reached me and brought me from the world. But there's no power in these churches. That's why you're not reaching these people that look like Brother Ronald. You understand? They're not reaching these women with them Brazilian butt lips. And them, they got a million followers on Instagram. They ain't reaching them. You go in their church, they all look alike. When they was in high school, they never really dressed like that. They never really was, 
known. They never really had a lot of friends. They never really was popular. They go to Christianity. Now they can become who they wasn't in the world. Do y'all notice that? But they never get the ones who are truly deep in the world, who never even knew about God. I'm talking about sell crack, sell this, sell that, right? They always say, oh, I was praying for a guy. He finally came to church. What took him so long? That brother ain't there from sincere and truth. That brother ain't there genuinely. That brother there because he might, he, he might see he got a way that he can get some money up out of y'all. Or he ain't got no other choice, right? But faith comes by hearing. You don't need five, six years to, to, to say, I'm going to be a Christian now. That ain't how it work. God get an invitation. You accept it or you don't accept it. Remember the bride, remember the brides, the virgins. Remember, some wasn't prepared. What happened when that door got shut? They missed opportunity. You come when God say come. You don't come when you come. He said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. And no one can come to the father. But what? No one can come. What? Unless the father does what? Draw him. What do you mean? I, I, I told him about Christ and he came five years later. Well, faith didn't bring him then. Because if he really had faith, it would have hit him right there on the spot. Because faith came by hearing. Everyone in the Bible that believed, they believed right then at that moment. Well, you got to take time. You know what sin is. You know this is wrong. You know this is what God says. What you going to go and sleep around with 30 more women? You can go and party and drink and have fun and then say, okay, you know what? I'm done now. My body ain't the same no more. I done got shot or I've been in a car accident or, you know, my, I, I, got, I got a head injury. I'm going I'm to go choose God now. In these churches today, these organizations that's called churches, you don't see no one that's from the, that look like they're from the streets. You don't see none of the NBA young boys. You don't see none of the, you know, the, 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 the 21 savages, the little dirks. You don't see none of them in these churches. You don't see none of the people that look like them in these churches. You see in folks that's been groomed and folks that's been brought up in religion, Christianity. That's what you see. Even the women as well. High, they went to high school. Parents raised them. You know, they this and that. A lot of them. I'm not saying that 95% of religious Christians today are people that was brought up in religion. People that knew of the things of God. Right? People who wasn't really in the world like that. Who wasn't deep in sin. They was in sin. Everybody was in sin. But they wasn't deep in sin. They ain't, you know... You don't see it. And if you do see them like getting baptized and stuff like that, you know, they don't stay. You see Kanye West, you, like they don't stay because they're not experiencing the truth. Who, whoever came to the knowledge of the truth, truly being saved, born again and then deviated. Those who truly was sincere about living for God and experienced God's power. Right. So you'll see a lot of celebrities might say, oh, yeah, I went to church. They go like they go on Easter and they go different days. But how many do you see that's from the streets that's really in these churches? You don't see it. They can't reach them because they ain't got no power. They can only reach you because you there for ulterior motives anyway. See, those who really need God, power got to reach them. Those who there for ulterior motives. Reputation, pride in the eyes of the world, pats on the back. Oh, you know that Bible. Oh, you a man of God. You a woman of God. You a prophet. You a prophet. You this, you that. Everything you wasn't in the world, you could become in religion. That's right. You ain't had no friends growing up. Now you got all the friends. You the choir leader. You wasn't popular when you was growing up. You popular now. Oh, pastor said he going to promote you to be an armor bearer. You got to work your way through the church. You never had day. You never really had to work hard in your life. Now they got you being an usher. Now they got you on a on this board, on that board, youth ministry, intercessory. You climbing the ranks. You feel like somebody. And that's what's making you feel that you're spiritual. It's all the trick of the enemy. That's why people question the word of God, because they're not truly there to believe the word of God. How can these foolish people be saying that Paul was living in sin? How can these foolish people be saying that the Bible has errors? And mistakes when it came from God, who the sun rises and sets every day perfectly. The world been around longer than we even known because it's held up by God's power. But the Bible got errors and they got mistakes and they got this and that. It came from God. When has God ever fumbled or made a mistake? You don't see no mistakes in the word of God. You don't understand it. But that's the pride that's in people. Instead of them saying, I don't really get what I'm reading or it don't make sense to me. Oh, this is a mistake. This is the error. How can, can God make a mistake? 
Isn't he perfect? Don't we see the front, the foundation of the world, the existence of the world? Isn't the function of the world perfect? It's the people that make the world to be the way it is. Them seasons come when they supposed to come. That rain come when he sends it. The auction has always been here and never we never we never woke up one day without having air to breathe. It comes from God where we're surrounded by no oxygen in outer space. He allowed man to make rocket ships. He put it in them people's heart to make rocket ships to go out to space to show you that Genesis is real. He's showing that the world has ferments between the ocean and land. He's showing you that the sky is what he said the sky is at. He's showing you that he made a lesser, a lesser um, light by uh, night and a, and a greater night by day. He let man make rocket ships just to go. Listen, a man rocket ship can't go no further than what God allowed it. They only been able to stand on the moon and take little pictures because all of the planets too far away. But he let, he let them make telescopes to be able to look at them planets. Ain't no life up there because in Genesis and the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was God. And he said, let there be light. And the only thing that the Bible references of humans being living on is Earth. This planet. That's right. See, in the book of Isaiah, in the 40th, in, in the, the book of Isaiah, 40th chapter, it talks about how God sits on the circle of the world. Isaiah was written about 1400 years before Christopher Columbus chose to sell off and see if the world was flat or was it round. But see, back then, they didn't even have faith back then, because if Chris Columbus would have read Isaiah, he would have seen that the Bible says that he sits on a circle of the world. So when he would have discovered the world was round, as the Bible said it, 1400 years prior, he would have gave God the glory. But men don't want to give God the glory. They want to question everything. They want to doubt everything. They don't believe. You understand? So what I'm telling you is this. This is the reality is that people don't want to die and go to hell. So they claim to be Christians, they claim to be believers, they claim to believe in God, but they go to earthly resources to receive help that's, that they're supposed to get from God. But because they don't read the Bible, they don't really believe in the Bible, they don't really believe in God, they're only doing it to fit their own philosophy of life, they don't even know what God can do for them. So when you do get up here and start talking about miracle signs and wonders and power, this and this and that, they look at it in a bad light. Like, what is he talking about? Because they don't believe. But they claiming to be my brother. They claiming to be my sister in faith, but they don't have faith. Faith is what? The substance of things what? The evidence of things what? That's right. So if you truly got faith, you can't trust God in one area and not in other areas. That's not faith. You can't trust God to protect you from this dog biting you, but they don't trust God to protect you from drinking this bottle of water that have been sitting in your trunk. What are you going to think going to happen to you? The water is clear. You can look through it. So how, you cannot have faith in one area. Faith is not a panic button to push in times of trouble. Faith is a lifestyle, a dependency of trusting in God. That's faith. So this is why when we're preaching the word of God, people are sitting here saying, oh, Paul had a demon in him. How can a man of God have a devil in him? That's the devil speaking through you. How can a apostle Jesus Christ have a demon in him? He said a thorn in his flesh. He was reciting Ezekiel. He was reciting in the Old Testament. He was a Pharisee. That's what he was reciting. A thorn mean that a pricking. God said it in, in the Old Testament first. Paul was a Pharisee. He was taught under the, uh, under the feet of a doctor of the law. The same one that spoke for disciples in, Gen in, in, in the book of Acts. That's who taught Paul. Gamaliel. That's who taught him. So Paul was well skilled in the Old Testament. That's why he said a thorn in my flesh. The demon was sent to rile the people up, to make him go through extreme persecution. Jesus said it to Ananias. He said he's going to suffer for my namesake. How did he suffer? Would you ever see him talk about a demon attacking him? He said he'd been beaten. He'd been, he'd been shipwrecked. He'd been bitten by a viper. You know, he was stoned, left for dead. Ain't never talk about having no demons in him. That's a hypocrite. These are unbelievers. That are delusional, but making themselves believe that they saved. Everybody's not your brother. Why do you think I'm not part? Why do you think people be sending me them little invites of their church? They, I'm not joining none of that stuff. That's stuff is not of God. It ain't about being mean. It's not about being. It's, it's about the truth. You got to stand on the truth. If you don't stand on the truth, then what you going to stand on? A lie? Then you ain't real. You fake. You got to stand for the truth. If you want to live your life in the world, live life in the world. But don't play that game as if the Bible was questionable or the Bible's not true. 
Because as soon as you start feeling the pain in your chest right now, and as soon as you start feeling like you're about to die, who are you going to call on? Not the Ghostbusters. You're going to call on God. That's the reality. That's anybody. Everybody, all, everybody blowing smoke, saying what they want to say, this and this and that. But as soon as when they lose control and they, and they, they feeling like death is coming upon them, what they start doing? They might even get on Google and like, Google, what's this mean? My chest is feeling numb. Oh, you're experiencing a heart attack. They're going to go to the doctor, but they still going to be asking God to help them. So let's get together. Either it's God or it's the world. But stop making it seem like there's flaws in the Bible. Ain't no flaw in the creation of the world. This world been providing for you, your family, my family, and those who came before us. God is a provider. He don't lie. He don't make mistakes. He don't got anything to prove. He done proved it. He the boss. He made this world. What do you got to lie about? How you going to let the devil come in and, and disrupt his word? That's the only thing we might, we're going to receive salvation from is his word. We only going to get to heaven by the word. Can't nobody alter this Bible? Listen to me. How can man alter this Bible? When since the beginning of time, Satan's been trying to keep the word of God from flourishing and blossoming and spreading like a wildfire. He tried to kill the children of Israel. Y'all want to do a rundown? Genesis. He came to Eve. Why? Because he wanted them. This is what the devil said. This is what you don't know that he said. But this only be revealed through God's revelations, right? Satan said to himself, I want two people to come to me, come, come with me to judgment, right? A male and a female because he's already been judged. So when God created the world, Lucifer, Satan was already here when the world was before the world was created. Remember, heaven was before the world was. You understand? Before there was before the world was, heaven was, right? Remember, that's God's kingdom. He made a, a this is his footstool. Heaven is his throne, earth is his footstool. He made earth for human beings. You understand? Heaven, his home is in glory. So they were already here before the world was created. So Satan said, I'm going to bring two people with me, a male and a female. And that's why he went to Eve and, 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 and made her, you know, to sin against God by making her doubt. But God gave her free will the same way he gave Lucifer free will. So you see the same thing played itself. Not listening to God created what? Sin to pass over everyone. Not listening to God. What happened to Lucifer? He created his own self. Now he's a devil. He's no longer an angel. He's his own creation now. You see? So Listen. So what happened was he brought two people with him. So now we got it. Now people have to go through judgment. See, so this is the reality is that people don't understand. Don't, people don't understand that there's a war going on, man. Whenever little thoughts come into mind, and little feelings come, that's all coming from Satan. Because you don't think about this. When a person when a person leaves their house, right, they left their house. But you get this airy feeling when you pull them back up. That somebody's in the house. What evidence do you have that someone is in your room on your bed? I'm talking about just thinking this weird thought in your mind. Who you think is giving you that thought? There's no evidence. Remember, we depend on our five senses as a human being. Touch, taste, see, hear, feel, smell, right? We depend on five senses. What do you see? What had you what did you hear? To make you feel this airy, nervous, scary feeling that someone is in your house. That if you park right, something's going to happen. That's the devil. People just become accustomed to his voice and them feelings that he give you. Thinking that it's yourself. Oh, my intuition. Okay, that's anxiety. Because whatever going to happen, going to happen regardless. That's the reality. I'm not going to not park my car right here because people, people right there like they might rob me. I mean, before you can get robbed, you can get robbed anywhere. Think about how flimsy house doors are and house windows are. If somebody really wants to get somebody, they can get them, brothers and sisters. Our doors, houses and windows are not bulletproof. And doors and windows are flimsy. Anybody can kick a door in. So come on now. Anybody can do a harm, harm anybody. You don't see people that be going to the grocery store and they get kidnapped. You don't see women walking or whatever. A person walk. You see yourself on YouTube. People walking, getting stabbed, just walking. Anything can happen to anybody. You understand? So people living in fear, that's the devil trying to keep you from being able to live for God and trusting in God. He knows how powerful the word of God is. He was up there with God. You never was in heaven before. So you don't know the extent of God's power. You're trying to learn about it through God's word. But Lucifer was up there. He knows God's power. So his job, you're talking about he's twisting up the scripture and people are altering the Bible. He can't touch that word. If he would, he would have got rid of it. 
Because even if he twisted up 20 things in the Bible, there's over a million that's true that will lead you to everlasting life. But he didn't alter nothing. This is the point I'm trying to make. I'm just saying, right? Don't twist, because somebody will make a video of this. Like, look what Brother Ronald said. Saying, no, that's not what I'm saying. I'm telling you that even if you were in the jungle in the Amazon, in the deepest jungle, and you had some ripped out page out the Bible, you can still receive salvation on them ripped out pages that's teaching you who Jesus Christ is from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You can make it to glory. In the, in the Bible, believers never had the Bible that the, the way that we have. They never had the word the way that we have. They never had it that way. But they still received the Holy Spirit. They wasn't able to read 66 books like we could read 66 books. They didn't even have it. Remember, John was the last apostle that died. John died around 99 AD. He was a prisoner on the Isle of Patanamos. When he had when he had the vision revelation, he was about a hundred something years old. He was old, right? He was an old man. So when he had this vision, that was the final chapter to the Bible. So remember, when Paul was writing these letters and these epistles, they only had what Paul was giving them, right? So they didn't have all the the Old Testament and all the old books. John didn't even write revelations yet. Paul never lived to see revelations be written. Paul never lived. Paul died around 69 AD. Do the math. John wrote, was on Alpha was around 99 AD. So Paul never even seen revelations. But he preached it though. All through his, see, that's how deep it is. He preached about, you know, the Lord's going to come back and descend, you know, shout, shout with a voice of a, the archangel, the trump of God, and dead in Christ arise first, and those who are alive will meet him in the air. He preached revelations without even seeing it. See how powerful that is? So you see, Satan can't do anything. So why would Satan allow the Bible to be? If he had it his way, he'll get rid of it. He's been trying to get rid of the word of God since the beginning of time. You understand? He can't do nothing. He had to come ask God permission for Job. You know that. If he had that type of power, then how come everything that was written about Jesus, he did it? He said it. So you got to stop. We got to stop listening to these people. Listen to these people that sitting here talking about Paul lived in sin or Paul was talking about. You don't understand the Bible because you're not a true Christian. You would never, ever think that God will mislead you or misguide you or allow an error to be in the Bible. Because if it's an error, that means that everything that you believe and you stand on is an error. That's the truth. If you believe that there's a mistake in one part of the Bible, then you got to believe that the whole Bible is a lie. If not, you're foolish. You're telling me that you're bringing, you're bringing something to me and you're saying, Brother Ronald, this thing that I'm bringing to you, it got mistakes in it. But I want you to believe in the rest of it. I'm not believing in nothing about it. What's the mistakes about? And why is it a mistake? And, and if you're telling me that it's three mistakes right here, how do we not know it's a thousand mistakes right here? That don't make any sense. Who told you this? Well, you, how you know that this is a mistake and how you know this is not a mistake? Now it's questionable. Can nothing be questionable when it comes to God? Because our life depends on it. Salvation depends on it. Can nothing be questionable when it comes to God? Don't sit here and tell me that, oh, we got to do research and we got to figure it out and we got to try to this and we got to do that, try to figure out what the Bible is saying. Man, you got people that's in prison right now they can't do no research. So they don't receive salvation. They can't go on Google and read the Hebrew Bible. Come on, brothers and sisters. You sound foolish saying this stuff. The Bible never say that. The Bible say study scripture. The Bible. We don't got to read no book that no man wrote. Oh, you ever read that book the man said, the, the, the Dead Sea Scrolls and Secrets of the like, That's foolishness. A man wrote that. How you trust a man confession more than God's? This word, this is the word of God that came from God. Ain't no nation in this world obeying the Bible. No nation. Not even our nation. They don't even talk about God no more in the Pledge of Allegiance. That's right. One nation under God. They don't even say it no more. People have turned far from God. Why are they printing them Bibles for? Why are they printing them Bibles? This Bible sitting here teaching you about righteousness. Who, in the, who, who on earth is going to print these Bibles out? For what reason? You see? So that's all I'm telling you, brothers and sisters. It's God that's behind it. They couldn't erase the word back then. They can't erase it now. Satan can't touch that. This was the only thing that's going to send us to glory. So all that, the Bible's been altered, the Bible isn't that. You sound foolish. You know how powerful God is? You talk that powerful talk about God when you want God to bless you. When you're sick and you want to be healed, oh, God is powerful. Only he can do it. 
You don't even believe Satan can even touch you now. Y'all hear, hearing me? Oh, we too prideful. Now listen to what I'm saying. Listen to what I'm saying. When you want God to be powerful and unshakable, he's powerful and unshakable. But when you don't want him to be, oh, the Bible can be altered. People can come in and steal his word. Come in and alter his Bible. Who y'all think y'all are? They couldn't alter the world. They couldn't remove his name from our mouth. When we sneeze, we say, God bless you. It don't matter how much we grew up in the hood. It don't matter how ghetto our mama was. We still say, God bless you when you sneeze. They couldn't remove that. Then they gonna remove the word of God. His name is off our tongues without us even wanting to say it. It just feel natural to say, God bless you. Bless you. Thank you. Why you say it? Oh, it just feel normal. That's right. Come on, brothers and sisters. God can't be moved. You can't move him off his throne. He the boss. Y'all being deceived by this world, making, oh, the word's been altered. A white man wrote it. White man write nothing. White man write nothing because in the Bible, it don't make black or white be superior than the other. That's the truth. You know who wrote it? God wrote it. To give us opportunity to learn about him and to, and to, and to grow. Let me tell you this. And many of y'all up here know me and how I lived my life in the past. Right? I didn't blow smoke when I was in the world. Right? Listen to what I'm telling you. What I have learned and what I have seen and what God has told me, the reason why there's so much controversy, you don't hear nobody talking about Allah's not real. You don't hear nobody saying the Quran is altered. You don't hear the Quran copied off of the Bible. See, let, let me give you wisdom. Let me give you a little history. Right? The Quran was written 600 years after the Bible. Muhammad said he had a vision from Gabriel, the archangel. Pause. The Bible never, ever said that Gabriel was an archangel. He was a messenger angel, right? The only archangel that was mentioned by name was Michael, right? Now, who visited this brother, Muhammad? Because according to Bible, we don't know no Gabriel archangel. That's not biblical. And if it's not biblical, then it's false. You hear me? So I don't know who visited that brother. That was Satan. That wasn't no angel from the Bible because God's word will never, ever come back void. Right. His word will remain the same. That's what it says. So this brother said he had a vision from God who he calls Allah. Now, they, they say Jesus Christ is not the Lord and Savior. Let me tell you why. Because Satan knows the only way to salvation is through the Messiah, who is Jesus. He don't care if they believe in God because God said it, that the only way you can enter is by believing on Jesus Christ. So he'll let them say Allah is God, Buddha is God. He don't care about that. Just don't believe in Jesus because in the name of God, no demon going to get casted out. But in the name of Jesus, why do y'all think they say that Jesus sits on the right hand of God? Let me, give, let me take you back in, in time. Y'all ready? We all on the school bus? Let's go back in time. In the Old Testament, it always mentioned the finger of God and the hand of God, the right hand of God. And it was always used to, to explain in power. So now when it says that he's seated on the right hand of God, he's not actually seated. They're spiritual. There's no flesh and blood in heaven. He's not seated in a physical sense, that's just for your understanding because people are in the natural mind, right? So seated on the right hand means that the power, that's why you see in that name, demons tremble. In that name, demons are casted out. In that name, you experience miracle signs, wonders, and healings because that's where the power flows through. Remember, Jesus was the visible, was the visible, invisible image of God in the flesh, in this world. That's right. So when you've seen all those things take place, that was the power of God. The Bible said that demons believe in God and they tremble. And the Bible said that Jesus name is above every name that the mention of Jesus Christ's name, every knee, no matter if it's in this world, in heaven, on earth and beneath the earth, they all must bow. You understand? So Satan knows the power that is in the name of Jesus. So he don't care. He, he deceived Muhammad to make him believe this is God talking to you. So why do y'all take everything from our Bible but about Jesus? Because salvation is only through who, y'all? Let me see you write it. 
Who was salvation only through? Can anybody write that for me? Just see that y'all following me along. Y'all following along. Who is salvation only through? Who is our Lord and our Savior as Christians? So now you see the picture. So if you can take him out the equation and build a strong, powerful, false religion. That's right, Queen. Build a strong, powerful religion. Guess what? It'll deceive people. People are going to gravitate because nobody wants to live it for Jesus for, truthfully anyway. What the Bible say in, 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 in the four Gospels? That the light came into the world. Who was the light, brothers and sisters? Who was the light that came into the world? Y'all know it. You can write it if you want to. The light came into the world. You already wrote it. For my, my, first, my first question is just the same as my second question. The light that came to the world was Jesus. Look what the Bible said. For the light came into the world, but men love darkness rather than the light. So Satan knows that our conscience came from righteousness. So he had to find a way to be able to numb our conscience when we do wrong. Because the Bible, the word of God, it convicts people. It makes you feel guilty. It exposes your unrighteousness. So he created all these false religions. Remember, Buddha was, came around a little bit after Jesus, right? Come on now. The Quran was written 600 years after the Bible. So when Muhammad, you know, started Islam, he was around Christians. This is why he took much from the Bible, but crossed out Jesus Christ as being the Messiah. Because Satan knows if you cross out Jesus, then you can't receive salvation, right? So he didn't care that they took from our Bible. I'm telling y'all, ask any Muslim. They believe in Abraham, just like we believe in Abraham. But how are you guys going to take from our Bible and then cross out my Lord and my Savior? No, I'm here to defend the word of God. You can't take from something that you feel is inauthentic and then make something authentic. You can't take a fake Gucci pocketbook and then add to it and say that it's real now. If it's fake, come up with your own creation. Come up with your own belief. But see, there's no belief out there that has truth in it like the Bible. So every false belief in this world pulls from my God's word. Buddhism, meditate, live at peace. We spoke that before you was born, Buddha. Muhammad, oh, Quran, yeah, Allah, this and that. We spoke that before you was born, Muhammad. You copying. You copying. You riding the wave, but don't want to give the credit to God. That's the truth. All the religions take from Christianity. There's nothing older than the word of God in this world. In the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was with God. No net, no knowledge, no technology can go before the earth was created. All technology is based off of what they have discovered and found on earth. But what happened before the earth? What was happening before the earth was? No scientists, no, no neuroscientists, no anyone can answer those questions. Where we came from then, scientists? The Bible sat there and told you. That the world was circle in Isaiah. That was written 1400 years before Christopher Columbus even made that boat. Santa Maria, Santa Perpita, whatever it was called. Before he made that boat. And he thought in his mind, through pride and anxiety, let me see if the world is flat. My brother, God said in Isaiah that he sits on the circle of the earth. So before you, you took in the credit of something that's already been confirmed. You take in the credit for people that who don't know the word of God. See? Tricksters, deceivers, liars. They said that he discovered that the world wasn't flat. You ain't discovered nothing but to some people that were simple-minded and believed your foolishness. But if you knew my God, he already told you. That he sits on the circle of the world. He put that in there for messages like we're speaking today. That's right. Do your research, brothers and sisters. Isaiah was written 1,400 years before Christopher Columbus and all these Spanish settlers, whoever wants to claim discovering the world wasn't flat, it was already mentioned. Listen to me. God said in Genesis, 
that women are going to have birth in agony. At that time, there was only one woman on this earth. So if a man wrote it, how can a man say something like that? And all women that wasn't even born yet still have birth in agony. How can a man say that a man can work by the sweat of their brow? Right? What do everybody do today? Work. What day they off? Saturday and Sunday. How is that possible when every nation can control themselves? But you don't see God in the picture. You don't see the boss sitting back there. Come on, brothers and sisters. Come on now. He said, I'm going to put a rainbow in the sky. My token to what? The earth that I will never destroy it again with water. How many times do y'all see a rainbow? Who put that rainbow in the sky? Is it a man on the airplane that got a transparent, um, some transparent paint and they're painting the sky in the airplane, making a big old uh, U in the sky? Who put that rainbow there? Come on, brothers and sisters. Come on. James said that every animal on earth has been tamed. He wrote that before there were zoos. Before there were zoos, he wrote that. What animal you don't see tamed? Who ain't have a pet that was a wild animal? Snakes, just name it. Birds, they got birds that, that'll fly and come back to the guy's wrist. People done hand raised tigers and lions. They're best friends. You see it all on TV. Bears and everything. You see? So people talk that God doesn't exist. That's because having to accept that God exists means you got to accept the fate that you're going to have for not wanting to serve and obey him. That's the controversy. Even with these false Christians. Oh, the Bible's been altered. You're not my brother. That's the devil in you. You a heretic. Don't call me brother, Ronald. You say you're saying that my God's word is altered. That's the devil in you. Only Satan will speak something that's so foolishly. Even Satan couldn't alter God's word. He even said, isn't it written? And he, he tried to misquote it, but he didn't, he didn't, he couldn't take, he couldn't um, erase the Bible. He tried to say it the wrong way because he, he, there's no truth in him. He ain't, the Bible ain't never been altered. It's always been true. All the prophecies about Jesus Christ, but that's a whole other teaching. But the Lord took me in that direction. Now look, let's go into the teaching. Okay? Now, let's go into the teaching. Watch this. Okay. Now this is what they're saying. I put it up here. I don't know if you guys can see it. This is what false Christians are saying, that Paul was living in sin. Okay? It says, that's right, brother. So when people say that it's not true, I'm telling you why they say it. I've been on this battlefield since 2015, left the world in 2013, right? Every person I have ever met that has ever said that the Bible wasn't true, there were people that found pleasure in sin, right? And even those who claim to be Christians, They'll be like, oh, the Bible don't say that we got to be perfect. The Bible don't. They living in sin. Why would you believe that God couldn't do it? Because you ain't trying to be perfect according to the word of God. You still want to live worldly, but still deceive yourself into believing that you're spiritual. Y'all following me? Listen to what I'm saying, brothers and sisters. Even those who are trying to be Christians, when I say that you got, you got a bird, brothers and sisters, a bird, you got an eagle, you got bad eyesight. You got bad eyesight, but an eagle got eyesight that can see from the sky to the ground, an ant that's moving. You got an eagle that can see 200 feet in the sky. You, you got to put on glasses when you're on a computer. Who gave that eagle that eyesight? See, folks don't want to live for God because they go to the world and receive help. When they got bad eyesight, I need some glasses. Man, I'm not wearing no glasses. God, you got this eagle that got bad eyesight. You got an eagle that got good eye, that got better eyesight than me. You got a dog that can smell. You got bloodhounds that can sniff out a person that's, that's, that done broke out of prison. You got a lion that can roar. And it can be heard four, four, um, four miles away. A lion's roar is, a, is, a, is, a, is as loud as a, as, a, as, a, as a heavy metal rock concert. That's how loud a lion's roar is. Who put that stuff in these animals? You got a monkey that's seven times, five times stronger than a human being. A monkey. You got animals that can't live outside of water. But when they come to land, they can't breathe. 
but they can live in water and their gills turn the water into oxygen. I don't want to hear nothing about God don't exist. You got fish that are in the ocean right now called sheephead that got teeth like Brother Ronald. I don't want to hear nothing about God don't exist. Don't try to talk to me about no dinosaurs and Bigfoot and, and, and no aliens. Every time you see an alien, it's that same circular UFO. We done, we done drove... My, my clocks for brothers that's up here. We done drove old schools back in the day. Look at cars now. We were driving old schools when they had newer school cars. Why are these, these, these spaceships still looking the same since the, we started, since they had video cameras when they first created them? They, they ain't upgrade yet. Everything in the world upgrades. You talking about artificial intelligence. You talking about aliens supposed to be smarter than humans. M more advanced. Why are they still riding around in circular um, um, spaceships? The same, and then when you see them, you can never see them good enough. How come Bigfoot, the same, remember, he's called Bigfoot, not Bigfoots. They've been trying to find Bigfoot. Even an elephant don't live that long. How old is Bigfoot? Because they've been trying to find this brother since when? The 40s? I mean, the brother got to be what? Almost 100 years old now. He's still running around hard to be found. But they ain't slow up a little bit. Even an old lion, once he get older, an old elephant, once he get older, even an old animal, once he get older, even a human, when he gets over, slows down. How, how Bigfoot still disappearing on y'all? That's right, Bugs. Distraction from the truth. See? They know it. That's all it is. Oh, it's an alien, a, a UFO. Come on. Hey, listen, E.T. or whatever they call y'all, why y'all still riding around them same space shuttles? Why, 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 is it, why is it circular? Because it's something that's not, that don't look relatable to anything on Earth. You follow me? The world is wicked. A space shuttle is circular. There is no manned aircraft that is flown around that's circular. So they had to create something false that wouldn't be relatable to anything that a, a man flies. You hear me? That's right. And every time you see it, the, the spaceship is always not too far in the sky because you wouldn't see it. But it's always at a, a good, um, a low enough height that you can record it, but not too close where you can get, make out good detail. And they always got the poorest quality. Do y'all see my phone right now? You see how good the quality is? We've been having good quality for years. But they show these pictures. They show these, these videos with the poorest quality. What they shooting off a camera phone? A flip phone, I mean, a flip phone? Or a Blackberry? Did they even have cameras back then? I mean, it's the poorest quality. It's a hoax. Listen, they talk about dinosaurs exist. Dinosaurs never exist. It's not mentioned in the Bible. What existed was animals that died off, that are extinct. There are many animals today that's going on extinct. There's many animals that were here 10 years ago that's extinct, right? So they find old bones, and some people make these fake bones. It's all for pride. All so you won't believe in God. Could you believe in the Big Bang Theory or the Ice Age? It takes away from Genesis. If you could believe in the Ice Age, guess what? Genesis didn't exist. God said that he formed the world. It wasn't no meteor, no asteroid, no nothing. Where did life come from? You see? So what people's problem is, even those who are in religion and those who don't claim anything about God, they find pleasure in sin. That's the reality. Just ask a person, what do they, they consist of throughout the day? And 99% is going to tell you they commit in some type of sin. What does the Bible tell you about sin? The wage of sin is death. Do you want to go to hell? Of course not. But do you find pleasure in sin? Of course you do. So what do you do? God don't exist. Yeah, he's not real. How can there be a God? There's so much suffering in the world. How can there be a God? How can this? How can this? How can this? No, the Bible don't say we got to be perfect. Brother Ronald, you preaching the false teaching. The Bible don't say we got to be this and got to be that. You got a perfect record for not getting arrested. You got a perfect record. That brother, that brother on YouTube went to Bird King for how many years? <laughs> that brother ain't never missed a day. Perfect track record. Do y'all ever leave the house without brushing y'all teeth? Do you, ever, do you ever do number two without wiping your butt? You ever put any other liquid in your, in your vehicle that go in the gas tank but gas? I'm talking about to drive around and, and, and drive the car. I ain't talking about no glass cleaner, no gas cleaner, nothing like that. You know, fuel injection. I'm not talking about that. I'm saying, 
Have you ever put anything else in your gas tank to make the car go? To drive like gas, but gas. No. So you got a perfect track record. You see? So when people look at the reality, it's all based on not wanting to serve God. They respect him because they like something created us. I'm not going to walk around and say something created us. You know, you got to be insane. You know, we're created by something. That something is God. But having to embrace that God exists and that the Bible hasn't been altered and is true. That means you got to make a change. But in order to protect yourself from making that change, the white man wrote it. It was for Man, look, them slave masters, they was not no Christians. You got people today that ain't no slave master. That ain't that ain't no no uh, person that's killing people. And they still misinterpreting the Bible. You got folks waving their jacket, the whole congregation falling down. These false prophets. You got people out here. You got people out here that's 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 stealing money from people. That's deceiving people. They don't want to. They don't want to leave. They, it's not that they're scared of the change, John. Let me let me just help help that. That's that's a good message though. I, I, they're not scared of the change though. Let, let me tell you why. Because change is good, right? So we can't say that. That's like a person that 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 is overweight, right? We can't say they're scared to lose weight when their life depends on it. Salvation is, is what we need in order to live in peace, joy, love, and everything. Nobody is scared of the change. They don't want to change, but they know they should change. You see? But they don't want to leave that comfort zone. An overweight person loves to eat that food. When you put your penis inside of a woman, how's it, how's it feel? What's, what's a woman with a vagina feel like? Those of y'all that's fornicating up here. Be honest now, when you have sex, what does sex feel like to you? So you ain't scared to get rid of sex. You like it. It feel good on your penis, right? Women, them orgasms feel good. Men, them, 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 them you come in ejaculating, what does it feel like? Does it hurt? Is it painful? Or do you find pleasure in it? How come, look at, look at Chris, he gonna keep it real, see? These are my real brothers. They ain't gonna, they ain't gonna fake up here. These are my brothers. They gonna keep it real. That's why I love them. These are my people that was with me when I was in the world. If y'all don't know, John, you know, bigger figure, James, Christopher John. These are my brothers. When we was gangbanging, right? When you have sex with a woman, watch this. I had a whole other message. We might have to just do a, a part two to this. God done took it. That's right, John. See? Comfortability. That's right. See, that's the reality. And these are my brothers. See, look what they're saying. See, that's why I love people that's in the world. Right? Or people that came from the world, people that was really in the world. Remember I was saying earlier in the video that most people that claim to be Christians, they, they never lived that life like we lived. That's why they, they always had a church of us being someone high and mighty or this. These are people, right? A lot of people here that are still in the streets. It's people that still live in that gangster life, still hollering Su Wu, the ones that is, right? Listen to what I'm saying to you now. These ain't no fake people that's up here. These are people that I ran with, right? That I can I can tell you they 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 about that life, right? Listen to what I'm saying. Listen to what I'm saying to y'all. A person stumbled across the Bible. They reading it. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, the Bible said don't fornicate. The Bible said don't lie. Now you, now you, 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 your eyes have been opened now. Now you know, and your conscience is like, well, yeah, when I fornicate, these women get pregnant. You know, when I fornicate, I'm on child support. They gone, they gone to my paychecks. Yeah, when I fornicate, I can't really be with my children like that because now I got somebody else that I'm not with. You know, look what look what look what James look what look what look what Chris is saying right here. Look what Chris just said. Look what Chris just said, y'all. Never mind what I'm saying right now. Look what he just wrote. Nothing good comes out of sin. Period. You see, that's the reality. You see, but listen, what happens is is people come to knowledge of the truth, and they see it. Now you have a new knowledge. Now, now your eyes open. Your conscience is tapping into what you're reading in the Bible, right? So watch this. So now when you keep doing what you were doing before you knew what the Bible said, now you're making excuses. Oh, I don't, I, I don't want to keep masturbating. Brother, brother, listen to me. Look me in the face, brother. Before you knew what that Bible said, you know you was watching Pornhub, you know, this, this, this porn star, whatever their names are now, you know, whoever popular, whoever well-known, you was watching them people and you was finding pleasure in it. Why all of a sudden now, Oh, masturbation. I don't know. I, I got to stop this. You weren't saying you got to stop nothing when you was doing it without before you knew it was wrong. Just because you've been made aware don't mean that you want to change your life.
Now your conscience knows that you can't deceive yourself. Every human being never read the Bible. You hear me? So that's why a lot of Christians be saying, there's no way we can be perfect. You got a perfect God you believe in, but you don't believe that he can't make you perfect. You got an eagle who got an eyesight, a monkey that's five times stronger than you. But it's not possible through God. Then how is it possible with them? How the world perfect? What, what in the world ain't perfect, brother? Says, what's, what's in the world that's not perfect? Name something. People. There you go. Because they are apart from God. But everything that God created in this world, that's right. Yeah, but listen. No, listen. Chris, let me do it like this. Let me do it like this. Let me just help what you're saying, Chris. What we have to understand is this, that we have free will. That means I could say, I love you, Chris. I love you, John. Right. That's I got free will. Or I could say, I don't love you. Right. Now, listen, when you have a, a job opportunity, you, you got two jobs. One job is saying all this for these benefits, more freedom, more liberty. They're going to do this, do that. But. It's, you're going to have to do this, you're going to have to do this, do that, do that. So you're going to say, okay, this job. The other job is saying, the other job is saying this. Well, this job, you got to get rid of the car you got. You got to get rid of the way you talk. You got to cut your hair. So you're going to say, man, I'm going with this job. See, those who are not really serious and who, who don't want this long, see, this job is only seasonal. This job is long term, but it comes with more sacrifices. You don't want to get rid of them sacrifices. You go in here. This is only temporarily a, a temporary fix. The one right here is, for, is they, they employ you for a minute. They got benefits going to come. This right here is a big bonus, a large lump sum. But you're going to take this one right here. The one that causes you to, to sacrifice and to, to, to lose things. You ain't trying to hear that. Because you're still that person that wants those things to bring you pleasure. See? So the reality is this. That Christianity is a choice. Living for God is a choice. Obeying God is a choice. So you make a choice. Are you ready, ready to wait until you marry a woman and not put your penis in a woman? How many really going to do that when sex is so easy? When nowadays women, they, they, they dropping it like it's hot. Right? Right? They twerking on everything. Everywhere you see, they twerking. Even celebrities now, they twerking everywhere. God keep me informed. I don't be on that stuff. But God, I got to be able to reach my people that's in the world. Right? That's why Christ ate with sinners. He was able to reach them. You got to know, know what's going on now. They twerk. All them celebrities twerking everywhere. Gas stations everywhere. On top of cars and everything. They twerking. Right? Celebrities are used to keep the world in sin. Right? That's what they look up to. If you don't, if you don't look up to God, you look up to those who are celebrities. That's the reality. So listen, what I'm telling you is this, is that you're telling the person you got to change everything about you. If you ain't serious about that, this life ain't going to be for you. But you done read the Bible. You done been convicted. And now you know that if you don't do this. You are a bad person in God's eyes. You can't live with that. So now religion gets created. Now we got these religious churches. Now we got all these denominations, Baptist, Methodist, Pentecostal, all abominations. Not supposed to be divided. Read somebody. Um, somebody put first Corinthians chapter one, verse 10 up here for me. If you can, can someone put up first Corinthians chapter one, verse 10? I want you, I'm going to, I'm going to try to see what that's going to say. It's first Corinthians chapter one, verse 10. OK, if you could do that for me now, listen, what happens is, is your conscience comes from my master. Your conscience came from righteousness. That's why people know good from evil. People know right from wrong. But as time goes, as, as you get older and life goes on, if you expose yourself to things that helps numb your conscience, that's when your conscience become more defiled. Right. So you become more numb. See, before you might have been more sensitive when people might have. You know, did this or did that, or whatever the case may be. But now you're like, I don't care about nobody. Because you've been walking in bitterness for so long, walking in anger for so long, walking in hate for so long. So now your conscience has become more number to righteousness. Now it's easy to stay matter. 
It's easy to be like, man, forget them people. But before you'd be like, man, you know, I, I, I love to help people. I love uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10, King James Version. So that's 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10, brother. If y'all can get it for me. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Hold on real quick. Okay. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. Now listen, watch this. When people read the Bible. No, you can't. No sinking into them. That's right, Brandon. That's the word. That's the word. So listen. Listen to what I'm trying to explain to you. This is why there's so much controversy over the Bible. Because Christianity is the only belief on earth that speaks about sin. Christianity is the only belief on earth. That tells you that if you don't obey this, you're going to go to hell. Why nobody speak about Muslims? Why nobody speak about Buddha? Because there's no threat. It's a little fat statue that they put fruits and incense and grapes that he never eats. So what? that's nothing. But you see people experiencing miracles, signs and wonders. And some of y'all that might be in the world, you might pray one day and to Jesus and really feel the relief. But nothing else helped you. The cigarette, the marijuana, the alcohol, nothing. So listen, watch what it says right here. Watch this right here. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to answer, answer that, Chris. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing and that there be no division among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. So how can we have denominations? See, it says right here, they're not reading this Bible because they're not Christians. You see, they took something. That's why Christmas came about. Jesus Christ was not born on December 25th. What does the Bible say that? What does the Bible talk about the Easter bunny or Santa Claus? These were people that looked into Christianity and liked what they were seeing and tried to copy some things. And folks came, if I'm not speaking truth, go to the book of Acts. Look when Simon, look when Philip went with the Samaritan. And the Bible said that Simon the sorcerer bewitched the people before um, Philip came. And the Bible said that even he believed and was baptized. But when James and John, when James, and, when John and Peter came down to lay hands on all of them, he tried to purchase the power of the Holy Spirit. But he followed them. They said he, the Bible said he believed. But his heart wasn't right. You understand? So what I'm saying. So, Chris, to answer this. They don't speak on sin. They speak on what they feel. Remember. OK, imagine this. Imagine someone comes to employ you, Chris, and they say you got to present yourself a certain way. Right. We're going we're going to deceive. We're going to trick. We're going to do whatever. But you got to wear a suit. You got to wear a tie. Why do they dress up to go to church? Where does the Bible say you got to wear a suit or a dress to church? Nowhere. I done read all the books, right? I studied. All I got in my life right now is the word of God. My purpose is to live for God and to die for God. Whether I face a firing squad, whether they hang me from a noose, whatever will happen. And when I die, brothers and sisters, don't cry for me. Just meet me there, right? I done seen heaven. I done seen Noah's Ark. I done seen the Lord the way that he looks on, in, in the spirit and how he looked on this earth. I done seen Paul and Peter and the brothers that came before me. I done seen these people. I don't speak. I don't brag about none of these things. But these are things that the Lord has shown me in the spirit. You understand? So in order to increase your faith and to help you, I didn't see glory. Sound doesn't exist in heaven. Oxygen doesn't exist. You don't even have a body. You can see, but you don't see anything. You understand? And it's beautiful. It ain't what they're trying to tell you in these movies. Right. Your mind can't comprehend it because it's not things that you've ever seen with the natural mind. Right. So you understand what I'm saying? And I've been to my master's mansion. Why would I want to come back here to this earth? I'm only here to help people. But if I was, if I had a choice right now to die and go be the Lord, I'm gone. Can't no one, my children, my wife, keep me here. I'm gone. This world is wicked. It's evil. All the hate, all the violence, all the wickedness against my God. He is so good to all of us. He gave us fruits and vegetables, animals, oxygen, 
all these beautiful countries and places and everything, and we treat God like the Bible is shoe. I don't want to be here. I don't want to be in this world. I ain't suicidal. I'm telling you that I'm just passing through, that this is not my home anymore. I figured it out. I'm not going to live on all we have to do is live for God with our whole heart. This is why Satan is always letting you know that he has you on his grass. That's why the headaches come, the attacks come, the dreams come, the voices in your head, the images, all the sicknesses. He's letting you know where you're going. That's what it means. See, when you're living for Jesus, you experience the peace and joy daily. I don't have no racing thoughts, brothers and sisters, I used to. I don't have no bad dreams. I don't get held down no more. I don't have no, no voices coming in my head or no rap songs coming in, right? I'm protected by God's grace. But listen to what I'm telling you, though. This is the reality. Is that we came from God. We was created from him. And sin is something that people desire to do because they have free will. Just because you know what is right don't mean that you want to do that. How many laws have you broken? So why you think it's why you think it's not why you think it's so easy to not obey God when you have laws that are punishable if you get caught and you still break them? How many of y'all speed? How many of y'all don't wear a seatbelt? How many of y'all litter? These are all breaking laws. How many of y'all do it? So you see why that's your nature to not want to comply because you don't already comply with the laws that God the rules that God created, right? Other men came in and altered you no know, those laws though. You see, so this is why people don't want to believe because believe in me, you got to forsake what you're comfortable with doing. But you don't realize that Satan is giving you what you want with, with his left hand, but taking what your life depends on with his right hand. That's right. He give you what you want. What did he tell Jesus in Matthew four? He said, bow down. Satan showed my master all the kingdoms of the world and all their glory. He showed it to him. The Lord never disputed that he didn't have it in his grasp. Don't be deceived. When you see these rappers and celebrities getting these record deals, Satan is behind that. He will move those people that's executives. He'll make them have a strong feeling the same way you feel about that woman when you first meet her. See? How you feel about that woman when you first meet her? How you feel about that man when you first meet that man? Like nothing else in this world matter. This is the one. He put that same feeling in these the CEOs. This is why you see people that look like they're never supposed to be rappers or, or singers. They just come out of nowhere because Satan got to keep the ball turning. He got to, He can't let everybody be celebrity. There will be no point to have celebrities. So you see, it'd be random looking people that's, that's celebrities. You see, because he put that feeling in them CEO's hearts and say, this person got potential. Let's give him a million dollars. Let's give him a three million dollar bonus. Next thing you know, they're making songs that's sinful, that's evil, that's wicked. Everybody just jamming to it. Twerking, popping, doing all this stuff, right? To keep people in sin. Because you're going to look up to them. You're going to look up to God. Remember, you were created to love God. Some of y'all wonder why your love so hard. Some of y'all wonder why you, you do so much for people. Because you came from God. You're trying to be who you wasn't. You're not, you are followers. You're trying to follow Satan, but you're not Satan. You're trying to be like him, but you're not him. You still have hope. You still have a chance. You still got a conscience. His conscience is gone. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. You have more Christ attributes. That's why when people do you wrong, you get mad about it. That's, what, that's why I'm supposed to take advantage of you. You feel some type of way. Because you're not like Satan. You see the difference? This is why. You're, you're, you're playing, this, you're, you're straddling the fence. See, I figured it out. I was a gang leader. I figured it out. Right? I was rapping with Brick Squad. I got it tatted on me. I did songs with Gucci Man, Waka Flocka, right? These are my best friends. They on my Facebook, right? Listen to me. But I figured it out that I was living delusionally. It was all a lie. You got Satan telling people, you got Satan telling people, oh yeah, this person ain't about that life. You know, you, you a real deal. You do this and that. He telling you the same thing. So you can cross your out. You see? Satan make you see that woman. Oh, she the one. She bad. The woman don't even care about herself or, or care about a relationship. But in your mind, you're going to chase her. As long as you keep distracted from the truth. The man, the woman going to be the same way towards the man. That's why in the beginning, it all starts out good. 
when you're with that woman or that man. Them long texts, falling asleep on the phone, then after you get what you want, you don't, you don't have no passion no more. The same way you are with that car. The same way, see how the world, see how the world, see how the world raises people? Listen to me. The iPhone 13 came out. They won't even allow you to be content. They won't even allow you to be content with worldly possessions. You don't even allow you to be content in your mind. Let them come out with weed that touch the floor. When we walk around tripping everywhere, boop, boop, just falling around. That <laughs> long old weave, step it on it. All they got to do is come out with it. The weed touching the calves now, it's going to hit the floor one day. You see? They're going to be walking around tripping. Listen to what I'm saying. When you got that car, that car smell good, it, you got the same instant, the same air freshener, but ain't the same no more. The car don't smell the same no more. Think about kids on Christmas. Christmas came from the world. It's a pagan holiday. That, them kids get all those toys. Listen to me. How many of y'all got kids up here? Keep it real now. I've been keeping it real with y'all. And the reason to lie. Lie for what? When the truth is, 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 is easier. And it's, on a, it's built on a, a solid foundation. A lie, you got to keep building on something that's not true. You're going to get caught in the end. Right? Listen to me. How many of your kids have shoes, clothes, everything, but they still want more? Now watch that kid when he becomes 20. Watch that kid when he becomes 25. That same behavior, all he did was grow to lack contentment. So now when he's older, he wants more. That's the reality. That's how it takes place. So this is what Satan does through lust. So now you see you, new job. Man, this job ain't for me no more. Satan will never let you see that you lack contentment. He will always say, you got to get it. You work hard for it. This job, your boss hating on you now. They acting funny here. Ain't nobody acting funny. He been acting the same way since you first got here. You just ain't see it that way. You need that job. But now you got another opportunity. Now the boss acting funny. He been that way. He been talking the way. He been sarcastic. He been being the way he was. But now that the excitement is gone, you want something new. You see? Satan's a trickster, man. That's what he does. He deceives the world. And make the world believe that the problem is not with him or with yourself, but with everybody else. But you allow people to hurt your feelings. You allow people to misuse your heart. You allow people, you give people money to borrow and they don't pay you back. But say it makes you believe that the problem is everybody else but you. Satan is more closer to you than you are to your best friend. I'm telling you, your best friend go to sleep. Satan don't. Your best friend might be out on a date. Satan ain't on no date. He a roaring lion, secret he may devour. He always going to be on you. He don't, let you, he don't give up. As long as you got air in your body and you apart from God, he going to afflict you in any way he can. Afflict you in any way he can. You see? So that's the reality. So let's go back. So when people, we all have a conscience. We all come from God. This is why you see people when they get when they get caught selling drugs, they be at court. And they, what they always say at court, man, I had to sell drugs because my grandmama, brother Walmart always been hiring. But see, working at Walmart ain't going to allow you to get those expensive shoes and those clothes and those belts. Keep it real. You sell drugs to live that lavish lifestyle. You sell drugs to be able to get with, you know. Average money, middle wage won't buy. That's the reality. You ain't got to be no rapper. You ain't got You can live a simple life. But a simple life in the flesh is unacceptable. That's why everybody got to be a doctor. Got to be a lawyer. Something that gives you that title and status. So you see, if you didn't make it in the world for those things, that's why in religion you can become those things. That's why folks go to Christianity. They don't really be saved. Some of them same folks you know that's going to be Christians. You'll see them in a the club. You'll see them in the street. You'll see them abusing their wife. You'll see them cheating. Spend enough time with those who claim to be Christians and just hang out with them for a week or so. And watch how their eyes follow that one with that big bottom that walked by you and him. You in the world now. So, they, you know, that's, that's who you are. But watch his eyes. Go to the mall with that brother that's going to be a Christian. Go to the mall with that brother. See what he look on his phone. See him on Instagram. Wife ain't around. Watch him look at them, them, them video, them Instagram girls. Come on now. Spend some time with them. Y'all think I'm blowing smoke. I don't got no reason to sit up here and lie. 
I speak the truth, I lie not. My conscience been witnessing the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you, if you spend time with those people, you only, a lot of these people, they only show what they want you to see. Right? Like reality shows. You never see nobody taking a boo-boo. You never see nobody peeing. You never see nobody brushing their teeth. You never see nobody fart or burp or sneeze or cough in a reality show. Never. It's not reality. So they're making you believe what's false reality. They're calling the false reality a real reality. Come on now. Women like their nails without having paint on them. Women like their own natural hair if it ain't weave. That's a false reality. So you see, it's hard to embrace the Bible, which is a true reality. When you live in a false reality, you ain't like your own people have people have dyed their skin brighter. Celebrity women. Women have got Brazilian butt lifts for their butt. Women have got bigger breasts for their for their for their for their chest. Because they're not content with reality that they were created that way. Folks go and put weave in their hair. That weave came from somewhere across the world. You only got the same hair structure for that type of straight hair. Come on now. You got on this type of straight hair. Your head, you, it, your head look funny. You don't even fit your hair, your face structure. That was on an uh, Indian woman. The people in the different countries are smaller than American women. Their face structures are different. Their heads are smaller, more narrow. You got all this weave on your, your head. Your head is bigger. Then you got it on top of your own hair. Brush the top, and you get you feel the clumps and everything. You can't even brush from the scalp. You got to brush strictly from midway and down. You brush it, it's all coming off. You understand? That's not a reality. I'm not here talking about no bomb. I'm just get, I'm just telling you. Don't 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 get mad, brothers and sisters. It's the truth now. But listen, to what I'm saying to you. This is why we can't embrace embrace the reality of the Bible, because in the world we embrace a false reality. But the Bible, the Bible is going to show you who you are. It's going to tell you about yourself. Nobody wants to see who they truly are. That's why they wear makeup. So you got to be ready to forsake those things in order to really see who you truly are. That you a sinner. That you like sex. That you like masturbation. That you like going on your phone all day long looking on Instagram and Facebook. That you like watching those reality. That you like violent movies. You like rap music. You like sexual R&B songs. You got to embrace that before you can truly be a Christian. If you come with those same behaviors, then you're going to be a false Christian. Talking about, no, the Bible ain't saying we got to be perfect. The Bible ain't saying this and that. You meant, No, Brother Ronald, you're taking it too serious. See, that's why you're talking like that. Because you know you're still living that double life. Keep it real. In the world, you can't put anything in the world like that. If that judge tell you pay that ticket and you don't pay a ticket, it's a warrant out for you. Come on, let's keep it real now. Why we play with God? Oh, no, nah, it's, you know, it's just that I'm struggling. You ain't struggling. You paying them bills. You taking care of yourself. You ain't struggling. How are you struggling in one? How are you struggling in this area when it comes to Christianity? But the same discipline that you need to be a Christian, you displayed in the world. The same self-control that you show in the world, you have the same strength to show it to God, but there's no desire. See, with sin, there's no immediate danger. Breaking the law in the world, it's immediate. Now, what they say in, in Georgia, 12 coming, they coming to arrest you, right? So you ain't going to play with the man. But see, that's why God ain't sparing nobody, because he see that you got this with self-control, to obey man laws with perfection, but you obey God's rules, but you don't obey God's rules, but you obey you obey man's laws with perfection. You pay that rent, you pay that mortgage. I don't, you gotta do all you gotta do. Some of you might have to do some things that you ain't supposed to do to try to pay that rent and mortgage and cell phones. You see, this is what I'm saying to you. You'll do whatever you gotta do. But you won't do whatever you got to do to obey God because there's no desire to. That's the reality. This is why people say the Bible has been altered. The Bible, white man wrote it. If you know anything about God, you know God ain't letting that happen. Come on. Come on. God, ain't, who, 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 want, who, want, who want to run for God? Who want a problem with the, with the most high? The Bible say even demons believe in God and they tremble. Who want problems with God? Come on, brothers and sisters. Even Satan know better. He had to ask God permission for Job. Then God said, go. Say nobody can alter anything about God's word.
Can't no one, white man ain't write nothing. Them slave masters, they wasn't true Christians. Because the Bible say you're not supposed to be men stillers. Read it. Look up the word men stiller in the Bible. Men and stiller, right? Like the Pittsburgh stillers, but men stiller. Look it up. It say you're not supposed to be men stillers. So we're not allowed to have slaves. And then what type of Christian were they raping women? And beating people with whips. And hanging them from nooses. What type of Christian is that? When the Bible tells us that if a man hit us on one cheek, give him the other cheek. So you got to be ready for this. See, a lot of folks ain't going to be able to sit there and just get smacked. So you see, you got to keep it real. You got to see what's required. That's why the Bible says that about the, 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 the parable about the seed and the sower. It's a choice. This is not forced upon anybody. You got to see if you're really to, ready to forsake your life of sin. If you're not willing to forsake it, it's going to be rough for you. You're going to be one of the people talking about, oh, the flesh is weak and, you know, I'm trying to make a change. No, you're not. Talk that way in the world. The world going to keep rotating. You're going to be left by on the street somewhere. The world ain't got no mercy for you. You know that. Don't talk that talk. I'm trying to make this change. Say that. Go to, go, to, go to your job and say that to your boss or to your manager. Tell the judge you're trying to pay this, this child support. You're trying to pay this bill. Or, I mean, you're trying to pay this, this, this ticket, this court fee. He got somewhere he's going to put you. You're going to get three meals in a, in a shower. I'm telling you. In a cold jail cell. You know better than that. So don't bring that mind frame. That's why God is, he can't be, he can't, you can't deceive him. Because you got what it takes, you just don't want to do it. Be real with yourself. But don't misrepresent God. Don't make it seem like the Bible is questionable and the man wrote it. Man ain't write nothing. And no man on this earth obeyed that word. Right? In our generation today, every nation got violence and militaries and guns and strip clubs and they, movies. The world promotes evil. The Bible says to abstain from all appearances of evil. That's what the Bible says for us. To abstain from all appearances of evil. That's the reality. So if we were the ones behind creating things, the world would be so simplistic. We wouldn't have no Mercedes and Rolls Royce and Rolexes and stuff. We'll have a regular watch that you probably get from Walmart. That's the reality. Because there's no need for that other stuff. So people's problem, now let's, let's just do a recap. This, we're going to do another, we're going to do a part two. Because we're not even going to go into um, teaching I had. It was too long. And we've already been up in this Getting late, right? People got to go to work and get up and stuff like that. So we're going to come bring it to a close, right? But this is what we're going to say. What happens is, is that people, see, the Lord does what he wants. See, did you see the title was for something totally different. The Lord just took over and took in a whole other direction for his glory. But listen to what I'm saying to you. When people read the Bible, their conscience can recognize that these things are right. If the Bible say being angry is wrong, right? You know that to be true. You know when you got angry, you didn't hurt people's feelings. You didn't said things you weren't supposed to. You didn't reacted in ways you shouldn't have reacted. You know that anger doesn't, doesn't produce good fruit, right? Now, so now when you get angry and you still find pleasure in getting angry, you're going to say, well, even Jesus Christ got angry. And the Bible never said that. Because now you're trying to justify your wrong because now you know that it's wrong. See? Now you know that. Remember, people that's in the world, even people that don't know about God, they still justify their wrongs because their conscience knows right from wrong. They're just going against it. So when people that portray to be Christians read the Bible and they're not truly saved, that's how the Bible gets misquoted, taken out of context. They say all type of wicked things about it. And they, then they're claiming to be Christians, but they're saying that they're the same thing that they're claiming. Then why are you a Christian? If you're claiming anything that's questionable, why are you claiming to be a Christian? How do you know that's true then? If there's any mistake or flaw in the Bible, what goes to say that saying that you're a Christian is true? How do you know that's true? How do you know man ain't put that in there? You see what I'm saying? You cannot, you cannot talk anything about the Bible and claim to be a Christian. You are a, a chameleon. You are, you, you're, you're a deceiver. You in disguise. You're trying to betray. You're here to lead people away because you don't even know that by saying all that stuff and, and talking about that, that's raising question and suspicion. And you sitting here talking about the Bible got errors and mistakes. That's going to be led, be led astray. That's the truth. Come to Brother Ronald. Ain't no, ain't no mistake in that Bible. God made us from, from dust. He's powerful. Even this, I got scriptures. I got, I got like two. This, I guess it was one teaching, but I got two other ones. 
that shows you that his word can't be altered. So, that, so we, we're going to trust God for his grace to be able to do that teaching. And that teaching is going to be that the, the word of God, I can prove to you from scriptures that the word of God can never be altered. That man can't add it or take away from it. Right. It says in the revelation, don't add to it, don't take away. You're talking about adding words, like speaking it. It never says about anything about them changing or removing scripture. Even Jesus Christ said he had to do all that was fulfilled in the law. But see, that's a whole nother teaching I'm going to do if we get if I get the grace to do so, to, to prove that the word of God cannot be altered, that no man can erase, take away, remove, place anything. I got scripture to prove it. OK, so that'll be another teaching that's coming soon by God's grace. This one today was supposed to show you that Paul never confessed talking about sins. I was going to show you how Paul, he was talking about his past life. Right. But we got this. That's, that's got to be a part two. Now we got to do a part two because God took it somewhere else. So that's the reality. So delusion and pride is people's main struggle. Not accepting the reality of who they are. When it comes to their hair, their face, their skin, their nails, their body, anything. Even when someone get caught, remember that, that show Cheaters? You ever see where the person get caught? Even the person that is working with the cheaters person to find their, their significant other, they get mad at the person that the person's sleeping with. That's delusion. He not forcing your wife or your husband to sleep with them. She was, she was, he or she was in agreement. But he's so delusional and he don't want to accept the reality that his wife or, or her husband or boyfriend or girlfriend cheated on him. And it was their decision. They want to believe through delusion, through delusion and pride with insanity that the, 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 the significant other somehow was forced. So that means that they was getting raped or they was kidnapped. But when that camera fly on them, they when that camera come and all the people standing around that with the, with the cheaters people, she ain't look like she raped. She ain't trying to get away. They hugging, they holding hands, they kissing, they find him in the car, all type of things. This guy see all that with his own eyes. He see his, he or she sees that person with that other person laughing, rejoicing, happy, affectionate. He seen it and still can't accept it because he lives in a false reality. You see? So when people read that Bible, they see what it says. They know they're not always, they know they're not there, but they don't want to have to accept that reality of not being there. So they start saying, can nobody be perfect? Everybody going to sin. We all make mistakes. God is forgiven. He's merciful. He's kind. You know, the Bible sit here and tell you not to sin. You know, the Bible sit here and say that we're supposed to be perfect. You know, the Bible says that when we receive the Holy Spirit, that we become like Christ. But if you let people that's religion tell you, it seems like we never, those verses don't even exist. It's like we have the mind of Christ, but your mind is constantly thinking about doing wrong and sin and, and, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So if we let people in the world that's religious teach the Bible, it makes like the Bible is a contradiction the Bible is a lie. But the reality is, these folks aren't truly saved. And the, before Brother Ronald said these words, what did Jesus Christ say? That many false prophets and teachers are going to do what? Go out into the world. That's right. So why are we shocked? If every Christian today stood on one continent and held hands and you look to your left and you look to your right and you say, are you a false Christian? Are you a false preacher? They're going to say no. They're going to say no. Who's going to who's going to admit that? They're in a false reality. But the Bible gave us a secret, gave us a polygraph machine, so to speak, gave us X-ray. Right. By the word, you will know the tree by the fruit that it bears. The Bible said never go off of what they said at their mouth, but go off of their lifestyle. Right. Go off of their behavior, their conduct. What are they doing? Spend time with a so-called Christian that you believe that's a Christian. Ask him go through their go through their phone. Look at Instagram. Go on their DMs. Go through their Facebook Messenger. See them. See some of them Christian brothers. Some of y'all that that that's claim to be Christian women. 
How many of them guys claim to be Christians always in your inbox, always in your DM, just like in the world? What do people be saying in the world? You're all in my DM. They claim to be Christians, all in your DM. You see? Ain't no different. Them folks living for the world. They living for the world. You see? Them same Christian brothers that's claiming to be Christians, all in your inbox. Trying to get some sex out of you. But going to throw God in there. Yo, you know the Bible. Ooh, you, you a roof. You this, you that. God is good. All right. Hang out a few times. They're going to start talking about, oh, you know, they, they fornication and all this type of stuff. Oh, we could do phone sex then. You know, all those type of things. They still in the world. But see, they don't want to embrace the reality that they still find pleasures in sin. They always did. But remember, having to embrace that they are sinners still, even though they claim to be Christians, I mean, they have to embrace where they're going. That's a tough pill to swallow. Right? So that's the reality. That's the reality why people read the Bible and then start saying it's a contradiction. But let me ask you this question. Let me ask you this question. Take away what you don't understand in the Bible, right? Take away what you don't understand. What else is wrong with it? Love your neighbor as yourself. Love your enemies. Do good to them that hate you. Bless them that curse you. Pray for them. What's the five usually and persecute you? You see why you don't like that verse? Because you know you get mad when you use you. You know you ain't praying for nobody when they curse at you. You know you ain't let nobody smack you and want you to give the other cheek. You're going to try to knock their head off. You see what I'm saying? This is why people talk about Christianity. See, they don't like what it says because they're still in that world and that, that worldly lifestyle. It ain't, it ain't that the Bible is controver controversy. The thing is, is if you don't embrace it, you're going to go to hell. You know that. So you find flaws. Your fleshly nature don't agree with what the Bible is saying, where you currently at in your life. You agree with some things. But let me tell you this. You got a house right now. Some of y'all up here, y'all got your own places. Some of y'all got your own. Oh, that's right. That's right, Terry. But remember, the Bible says that, though. The Bible talks about how they're going to go on. Silly women houses, you know, and, you know, laden with sin. That's what they're talking about. You know, you got people in Africa right now that pass that pee on women. You got pass in Africa right now that shave women's private hair. Y'all ain't trying to hear me. Think I'm making this up if you want to. Come on, y'all. If y'all know Brother Ronald, you know I don't blow no smoke. Right? Listen to what I'm saying to you. You got pastors right now that claim to be priests in Africa that shave women's pubic hair. You got pastors in Africa that make women drink their pee. Step on their backs. All type of strange and weird things. So you understand what I'm saying to you? Listen to what I'm saying to you. This is the reality, brothers and sisters. This is, this is the problem that's in the world. That these people are not pastors. They're not prophets. They're not apostles. Right? They're claiming it. What did the Bible ever say? Apostles are supposed to plant churches. What does it say to that? What church did Peter plant? What church was he over? That's not biblical. People say, oh, I'm an apostle. I plant church. I got three churches up under me. Oh, I'm a bishop. I got, I got church. When has a pastor ever been over church in the Bible? Are y'all listening to what I'm saying? Because you can, you can rewind this stuff now to go and cross-reference it. See if I'm just blowing smoke, but I'm telling the truth. There is no biblical docu documentation of a pastor being over a church. It was a bishop that was over a church or the elders. Never was a pastor over a church. That's not in the Bible. Read Titus. Read Timothy. Never was a pastor over a church. Never did a bishop have multiple churches to become a bishop. In religion, you got to have multiple churches to become a bishop. In order to be called an apostle in religion today, you got to plant all these churches. This is foolishness. They never ask for tithes. I've been preaching about tithes and offerings for how many years now, brothers and sisters? If y'all been up here with me, y'all know how long I've been preaching about tithes and offerings. Come on now. It's not biblical in the New Testament, but they still do it. Don't you understand that they have a form of godliness? They're trying to be like us, true Christians. But they can't because they don't have the spirit and they're still worldly. See, we died to the, to the, to the, to the flesh. We know, we have, we have renounced the, 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 the hidden things in our heart. We have turned from, we know that this stuff leads to sin. I mean, it leads to death. We know 
that it's wrong to fornicate with a woman, lust with a woman. We know those things. We, we, we believe. See, them folks that still live in the way they live in, claim to be Christians, they don't believe that. But it's beneficial for them to be believing what they claim what they're claiming. They don't believe in God. They believe in a religious God. Satan is their God. Satan don't care that you call him God. As long as you don't call that true God, he don't care. That's the reality. Y'all follow me? So that's the problem that we have today. Is that people, the, the only religion in this world that speaks against punishment for not complying is Christianity. This is why the world hates it. Because consciously, they know what the Bible is saying is right. This is why all these rappers, when they make, when they get the awards, I want to thank God. Oh, y'all pray for me. Keep me in prayer. They don't even talk about God. They rapping, they getting money, they partying. But as soon as something go bad, they go to jail. They, only God can judge me. They want to talk nothing about God when it was in the world. Because they're coming, we come from God. It's like the prodigal son. We come from God. But sin is more desirable than the goodness of God to a lot of people. So that's where the problem comes with Christianity. What I see today, this is not Christianity. We, everyone divided, denominations. This, this, is, this is a circus, right? So we here to defend the gospel, to show people the truth of God's word. One woman sent me a video the other day I told people to send me a video of people that to show what was wrong with their preachers. She sent me a video of this woman that was preaching. She said, what's wrong with this video, Brother Ronald? So I had three verses for her. I said, a woman's a preacher. A woman can't preach. Listen, if you don't agree with that, you're not a Christian. It's that simple, brothers and sisters. We're not here. Listen, you listen. You want to be a Christian so bad, right? then why is it hard to comply to what God said? If he said women can't preach, they can't preach, brothers and sisters. It's written in two places. Corinthians and in Timothy. It's written, right? And he break it down. Why is that way? If you don't agree with that, what are you going to go do? Create religion? This is what we got today. See? Folks want to rip the benefits from being a false Christian, but they don't want to agree with the Bible, Right? So they say, I don't agree with women can't preach. You don't have to agree. That's the word. So the woman wrote, she wrote my response, but never wrote me back. You see? Because she didn't agree. That's the reality. Why did she didn't write back? She asked me to look at, she asked, before I even watched the video, she said, what's wrong with this woman? I seen on this, it popped on my, on my phone and said, what's wrong with her? Right? Like women can't preach, nor you're a sub authority over man. That's the word. They can't be in a church preaching. A woman could be known for glorifying God, talking about God, but not having a reputation of being a preacher. That's the difference. We're not saying that sisters can't talk about God and can't, you know, witness about God. But being a preacher or a teacher is something completely different. Right. You post the Bible said always give an answer. So if a, if a woman is at work or she's out and a man comes up or a woman comes up and say, hey, you know, like, what about God? She's supposed to tell him about God, but she's not supposed to be a preacher. That's a whole different type of that's a calling. Right. A pastor is a calling. Right. Evangelist is a calling. The woman just can't preach in the church, but she can be known to be one with God. That's the difference. But taking on the role of being a pastor or a preacher, that's not biblical. It's in the Bible. So you see the problem that we have? Look at what I'm saying right now. It might be many folks that's watching this and they know in their heart they might not like what I'm saying. But that goes to show you the whole point of this video. Listen to what I'm saying. There might be folks right now that don't like what I'm saying about women not preaching. But that's what it says in the Bible. So you see what happened when folks read the Bible? The man seen his wife cheating on him. He's seen it for himself. And still couldn't believe it. And he's seen it because he lived delusionally. He don't, he, he don't, he don't want to set the truth. The Bible shows you clearly that women can't preach. You see it for yourself. You see? That means you're not truly a Christian. That's the reality. Because you're going to do whatever Jesus say. It don't matter. There's no compromising. He did, he did all that for you. You can't do nothing for him. 
He died for you. You can't just forsake these things. He gave up his life. He came down from glory to this wicked world. His own creation denied him, abused him, called him the devil. He did it for you. You can't do You can't sacrifice your life of sin for him. And he came to give you life and get you more abundantly. Your life of sin is going to lead you to hell. You know why you're depressed, why you're insecure, why you're angry, why you're frustrated, why you're impatient? Because you're still living in sin. If you let go of those things and truly convert, I don't care how long you've been claiming to be saved. The first is we're, we're, we're believing, we're reading the Old Testament their whole lives. And then when God came down, they still didn't recognize him. They knew the law at the back of their hand, but still couldn't recognize God, who they were reading about. So they see they, they was reading for pride. They was reading so they can have big boy talks about God and make themselves seen. The same thing you see today. Who can quote this? Who can quote that? Who can tell you where Moses was born at? What river was all that stuff? But when it comes to spiritual, it's nothing. See, let me give you a secret. In religion, Christians, they're only taught to discipline the flesh, to look a certain way, talk a certain way, sit a certain way. But spiritually, they're not there. They worldly. Get their phones. You're going to see all type of words up on their phones. Reality shows. What are they looking at on Instagram? Right? Go to, the, go to Safari. Look what they're Googling on Safari. Or whatever they got. Whatever internet browser they have. You'll see it. It's worldly. So you see, the battle's not... A, there's, nothing, there's no flaws in the Bible. If every nation debated, if there was a worldwide Ten Commandment Day, come on. For 24 hours, the world would be a better place. If Brother Ronald was able to go and sit and talk to the president and, and show him these scriptures and say, make this a, a, a decree for 24 hours, the world would be a better place. You see, if everyone had to comply, people don't want to comply. People watch violent movies that kill people. People watch movies where people are selling drugs. People watch movies where people are fornicating. People like sin. Actors get paid millions of dollars to show you sin. That's it. They get millions of dollars to show you what they not what people are not allowed to do legally. That's what actors do. They show you false realities. They got the hitman. He running around. The movie Taken. He running around. Killing all these people. Brother don't, go to, brother don't go to court or jail for nothing. So they don't got no detectives. This brother running around all these streets with all these CC cameras. Camera people got camera phones. Brother on all these. How these movies. See the false reality? How these movies allow all these hitmen to be running around. Where there's cameras on every corner and they still don't get caught. The whole two hour movie, he just living comfortable and never get caught. With all these cameras, he done shot points in point blank range on the street. The traffic camera didn't get him. Come on, brothers and sisters. False reality. But because people love it, they're going to keep making it. The world finds pleasure in sin. That's why God's not accepted. That's why in false Christianity, he's not accepted. Because they're not true Christians. They're only there for beneficial reasons. They could be who they wasn't in the world. In Christianity. Even though they're still in the world. But it's a different form of worldliness. Being a religious Christian. You're watching someone. See, that's the, that's the nature of the world. The world don't want to accept that they're wicked and evil. So instead, they can watch these movies that give them pleasure. But as soon as a shooting happens somewhere in the school or happens somewhere... They all, we need to get gun laws. Get rid of uh, uh, um, rifles. But you watch a movie where there's killing. You say there's a war on drugs. But you make movies where they're selling drugs. If the world's not delusional, I don't know what, brothers and sisters. So some of them same delusional people come to false Christianity and try to teach this false delusion. There's a war on drugs, but you can make movies about drugs. 
if something is so wicked and so bad, brothers and sisters, why is it allowed to be glorized, glorified? If murder is so bad, drugs is so bad, raping, robbing, stealing is so bad, why is it allowed to be glorified? What's really going on? The world is wicked, but they make themselves believe that they not. But you might say, well, why is there police in his laws? God did that. Come on now. That goes to show you that God's in control, that it can't get too far. It can't get too far out of his grasp, right? But he lets the world go their route to show them that they did obey his word. The world would be better, but it makes his word to be true because the world is living apart from his word. So now they got to see that his word is true because apart from his word, what does it say? Sin leads to death. You know, chaos, unrighteousness, hatred. What does he say? In the last, and that's right, his nation to be haters, despisers, haters of those who are good. That's right. They want to defund the police because police is the last line of defense that we have. That's that mirrors righteousness. You see? So the world, the world is being controlled by God, but he doesn't stop everything because if he stopped everything, then his word wouldn't be true. So when a person got raped or molested, they say, where was God at? Oh, he was here. Because in that person's conscience, they knew right from wrong. In that person's conscience, they knew they shouldn't be raping or molesting that child. They knew that. So it proves that God's word is true. Because if that person obeyed God's word, he wouldn't have molested or raped that child or that woman. See, God's word is true. But this is the result of people not wanting to obey it. I pray you all was blessed. Thank you all for listening. Maybe tomorrow the Lord might bless me to do the part two or do the other video and come back to this one. Who knows? But I love you all. I thank you all for listening. I thank you all for letting the Lord bless you. Remember his words that he gave me to speak tonight. And I pray that you all have a blessed night. And peace be unto you all. God bless.